Hey, I got a word. I got a word the other day, and it's so good. It it's focuses on the famine in the story of the prodigal son. You've probably heard that story before, the prodigal son, or maybe you haven't, but focus on the famine. And this is a, a word to those who are really struggling right now, and it's in uh, Luke chapter 15. It's one of the most beautiful stories, and it goes like this. Jesus said, he said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. Now, prodigal means like wasteful living. Uh, later on in the parable, it goes to say that he spent his money on harlots. Um, and, you know, probably a lot of other stuff. So it's all gone now. It says, but when he had spent all, he spent it all, there arose a severe famine in that land, and he began to be in want. You know, it says, Then he went and joined himself to the citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine, pigs. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. Okay, so there's a famine, and we know a famine is a great shortage, an extreme scarcity of food. Um, this guy was probably starving. And I want you to think, you know, is are you in a famine right now? The, a faraway land, you know, um, the guy, it said he went to a far country, far, far away, wandered from his father. Um, you know, he had wandered, probably took some wrong turns, made some bad decisions, got around the wrong people. You know, this was a story probably was talking about in a pagan land. Uh, because pigs were unclean animals to Jewish people. Um, you know, maybe things are getting really dark, really scary, and you don't see things getting any better. Um, you don't have any help or no way to get anything. Don't have anyone, maybe. You're all alone. Some sort of your own famine in your life. No peace, suffering, you know, suffering from lack. Uh, maybe you've lost almost everything you've had. Um... This guy was kind of a rock bottom. And, you know, that's a dangerous place to be. Uh, you know, death, it's almost as if death is knocking at the door. Rock bottom in your life. This guy was probably starving. And, you know, starve is, you have this craving or appetite and a great desire for something, but there's nothing there. Nothing there to feel it. You're starving. Um, so might be saying, how, what have I gotten myself into, or how did I wind up like this? And you know, this story is so beautiful. It says, but this guy, when he came to himself, you know, there was a moment where he came to himself. He got to thinking, and you know, this really calls for action in our lives, because he said he got to thinking about his father, and how he thought, well, I'll go and say, Father, I've sinned against heaven, and before you, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. He wanted to go back to his father. And so he arose. It said he arose in verse 20. And that's what we got to do. We got to go to action. We got to know that's where we need to be at. And it says, and when he was a great way off, his father saw him, had compassion, and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven, and in your sight I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, bring out the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet, and bring the fatty calf here and kill it. And let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So he didn't, he wasn't mad. He, he was so glad that he didn't die. He put a ring on his finger and a robe. He, he said, you're not a, you're, you're, you're my son. He wanted to be a servant, but he said, you're my son. And, you know, there's always hope with God. The Bible says that God is the God of hope. He will pull you out. He won't he do it if there's no other hope. When we start making moves and making steps to go to God, leaving all that other stuff behind, knowing that he is where things are going to get better, putting our faith into action and walking out toward him, things start to change. 
So I want to encourage you tonight, start thinking, have that moment, and, you know, things can get better. Don't give up hope. Just start moving to God. Start making moves to God. Make whatever you got to do because, you know, it says in His Word right here that He He still loves us, still wants us. He wants people to repent and turn to Him. He wants people to be saved. He's just waiting to bless you. So if you turn completely to Him, He'll help you. God wants to help you. So reach out for that help tonight. Bless you.